Okay guys, let's have a look at page 14 now. We're on question 9. Back to this uh, the right angle triangle. So we better write Sokotoa before we start. So, Katoa. Okay, now we've got here, we've got a triangle. Calculate the size of the angle marked X. Here's X. The side opposite, we label the opposite. And then the longest side, of course, is called the hypotenuse. And the uh, side that's next to it is called the adjacent, isn't it? So I'll put that in. There's the labels as far as the angle X is concerned. Now here's Sokotoa. We need two of any three to work out an angle. So we've got the opposite, so I can tick that and tick that one. We've also got the hypotenuse, so I can tick that one, and I can tick that one. Now I need two of any three to work it out. Can you see that I got two of the three there? O and H, and that's sine, so use that one then. Yeah? So let's use the sine. So the sine of the angle X then is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, isn't it? The opposite is 5.8 divided by the hypotenuse, 8.6. So tap that in a calculator. So we've got 5.8 divided by 8.6. Of course, we get that. No point, yeah, I'm going to go back to the fraction. Uh, 29 over 43. Because it's more accurate, isn't it? So sine x is equal to that. So I want to undo a sine. You take the inverse sine both sides. And we write that as inverse sine. I call it shift sine because it's shift sine on the calculator. So that's what it is. So we need to do shift sine, inverse sine of this, don't we, to get the angle. Because so we did inverse sine of that to give you the angle. Inverse sine both sides. And that's what we write. So let's work that out on the calculator then. So we need shift sine. See it's red. And there it is there. So that's why I pressed the shift button. So I do shift sign but hang on a minute because it says calculate the size of the angle marked x now i would assume that it's degrees we would want so i need to go back to my calculator and have a little look it looks to me like that, that might be a d or an r it's probably a d but let's just just check with shift mode and get degrees so we press number three Okay, so I'm in degrees mode now, as I was anyway, but I'll just double check. Shift sign, 29 and over 43. Let's put a fraction in, shall we? Because it looks easier on the eye. 29 over 43, and that will give us the precise answer, won't it? Go back to, oops, see the mistake there? Go back to ground level, put the bracket in here. There we are, that's fine now. 42.4 to 1 dp, so that'll do. 42.4. 0.4 degrees. There we are. That's that one done. Good. Now let's go on to the next one, part B of question 9. So let's scroll down. Now calculate the length of the side marked Y. Well, this is just Pythag. The longest side squared, which is Y squared. So let's write it down straight away. This is equal to the sum of the other two squares, isn't it? So it'll be the 9.6 squared plus the 7.2 squared. That's just Pythag. So let's work out that. So we've got 9.6 squared. 9.6. I'll just press the square button. I'm back down to ground level with that square button. Plus 7.2 squared. Yeah? Equals 144. So now we need to undo a y squared equals... 144 is what we got. To undo a square, your square root. So square root both sides then. Just put it in the margin to let the reader know what we're doing. Square root of y squared is y. That's why we're doing it. Square root of 144 then. Square root, which we know what it is, but I'll just tap it out just to be absolutely... Well, just to make sure everyone's on board. We'll get 12. There we are. Y is 12. And it was centimetres, so we better put centimetres at the end, haven't we? Okay then. So there's the answer for part B. So that finishes that little page there. That was page 14. Good. Let's go on to the next page. Great.